What are the signs of magnesium deficiency? What causes it? Why does magnesium get low? Can supplements reduce diabetes risk? Can it lower your risk of heart attack? What's the best type of magnesium? Is there a difference? What are the indications? Are foods really low in magnesium? Is there a test for this? In this video, I'll cover all about magnesium based on science. First, magnesium is vital for our life. Without it, you can't survive. It's in 300 plus reactions and vital functions like muscle contraction. With calcium, it helps muscles contract and relax. It's also crucial for heart function and heartbeat. Magnesium plays this key role too, not to mention its many other roles. I could spend hours just talking about magnesium's functions, but I want you to understand that magnesium is essential for our lives. So what signs and symptoms occur in your body when magnesium is low? The first sign is muscle weakness, fatigue, and difficulty with daily activities. As you've seen, magnesium is involved in muscle contraction. If it's low in your blood, you'll feel tired and weak. For the second sign, I'll highlight magnesium's role in bone health. Did you know magnesium is crucial not just because it works with calcium, but also for our bone health? People with osteoporosis or parathyroid issues may have magnesium problems. Weak bones and frequent fractures warrant magnesium testing. Usually when sign number two appears, people only focus on vitamin D and calcium. But phosphorus and magnesium also need to be checked. Sign number three is sleep changes, insomnia. Why? Magnesium also plays a role in sleep. It's crucial for melatonin production. Do you know what melatonin does? One of its effects is helping you fall asleep, inducing sleep. Changes in magnesium can affect your sleep patterns, got it? So, low magnesium levels need to be checked too. I'll explain later when to test and possible causes. I'll cover everything about magnesium. Let's continue with the signs and symptoms. Number four is muscle cramps. When people get cramps, they often only think of potassium, right? Ever heard someone say, I'll eat a banana for my cramps? My potassium must be low. Magnesium can also cause cramps. It's vital for relaxation, so any imbalance may lead to muscle cramps. Sign number five, irritability, anxiety, and depression. Magnesium is crucial for serotonin, known as the happiness neurotransmitter. So if your magnesium is off, it might affect your serotonin levels too. Number six is heart changes, like palpitations and increased arrhythmias, as magnesium helps regulate heart function. Remember one of the main functions I mentioned? If you're low on magnesium, you might experience more of these arrhythmias. And sign number seven is headache. Low magnesium increases the chance of headaches. Sign number eight, tingling, that ant-like sensation, decreased sensitivity, medically called paresthesia. So magnesium levels should be evaluated. Is this deficiency common? What are the causes? There are several causes. I'll explain each one. First, you might not be getting enough magnesium. How much is needed? Three to 400 milligrams daily. What are magnesium sources? Veggies, dark greens, seeds, chia, flax, pumpkin seeds, dairy, fish, fruits, and nuts. There are many sources in a basic balanced diet. I'm not talking about a perfect diet, just a basic one. You can get 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium from that, avoiding deficiency. But why are so many people magnesium deficient? Or is this deficiency increasing because it's being talked about more? It's due to diets based on ultra-processed foods, which are high in fats, calories, and low in nutrients, soft drinks, for example. A diet that isn't natural or at least minimally balanced, as I mentioned, won't provide enough magnesium. So that's one point. How's your diet? The second important point is that some people don't absorb magnesium well. So even if you eat healthily, you might be deficient if you have trouble absorbing magnesium. Intestinal conditions like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, or celiac disease can disrupt nutrient absorption or cause chronic diarrhea. These can also increase your risk of magnesium deficiency. Some meds like diuretics can affect kidney function, making you lose more magnesium and causing a deficiency. Stomach acid suppressants like proton pump inhibitors, such as omeprazole, esoprazole, Somoprazole and pantoprazole can also impact magnesium levels. Parathyroid diseases can affect magnesium too. Have you heard of the parathyroid glands? 
There are four glands in the thyroid that regulate blood calcium, crucial for bone health and magnesium balance. So changes in the parathyroids can affect magnesium absorption in the gut. This can lead to a deficiency. Also, thyroid issues like hyper or hypothyroidism can alter magnesium levels. It's crucial to assess this. Often, patients with thyroid or parathyroid issues start treatment without exploring other causes. This should be done simultaneously, not delayed, as many symptoms like weakness and heart issues can be caused by both magnesium deficiency and thyroid problems. Always investigate. Heavy alcohol consumption can also affect magnesium absorption, partly because alcohol is empty calories. Did you know a gram of alcohol has seven kilocalories? Meanwhile, a gram of carbohydrate has about four kilocalories. That's nearly double the calories of sugar. So we need to be careful about alcohol consumption as well. Kidney issues and diseases can also lead to magnesium imbalance. You might lose too much or absorb too little magnesium, causing deficiency. Kidney-related causes always need thorough investigation. Now that you know about low magnesium, let's discuss supplementation. Do different types of magnesium supplements actually work? Is there any scientific evidence to support this? Why are there so many videos about supplement benefits? A study showed dietary magnesium linked to health benefits like reduced diabetes and heart disease risk. However, this observational study can't prove cause and effect. So we can't really say that magnesium has all these effects. In controlled studies with stronger scientific evidence, supplemented magnesium didn't show these benefits. There's one benefit I'll mention later, but when they studied populations, removed confounding factors, and gave magnesium supplements. People didn't have a lower diabetes risk just from taking magnesium. So why did this happen? Remember the magnesium-rich foods I mentioned? They're fruits, veggies, seeds, healthy, fiber-rich, natural foods. People eating these natural foods versus processed ones will naturally see health benefits. But it's not just the magnesium, it's all the nutrients in these whole foods, got it? So a lot of claims lack scientific backing. Now we know that magnesium is very healthy but it's best when you get it from food with other benefits. I also want to point out that excess magnesium from supplements can be dangerous, causing arrhythmias, diarrhea, muscle weakness, and irritability. So don't just take any supplement without a professional's recommendation. What's the classic indication for magnesium in medical literature, where there's scientific evidence that you can benefit from it, it's for people with excess oxalate elimination in urine where kidneys remove a lot of oxalate. It's a specific indication you've probably never heard of, but I need to mention it. What are the types of magnesium and what's my recommendation as an endocrinologist? There are various types of magnesium, dimalate, citrate, chelated, threonate, and taurate. The main difference is absorption, with citrate and chelated forms being best absorbed. Otherwise, there's not much difference. Claims like, take Torate to wake up, dimulate to sleep, lack scientific proof. It's mainly about absorption. So, what's my recommendation? What should you do before taking any supplement? Have the underlying causes investigated. Why is this happening? If you have kidney issues, supplements won't help and may cause side effects. Parathyroid disease can also disrupt magnesium balance. Supplementing without knowing or with thyroid or absorption issues won't work and may put you at greater risk. Don't just take any capsule without research. Scientific evidence often says otherwise, as you've seen in this video. On a scale of 0 to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this one. I invite you to share your experience in the comments. What happened when you took magnesium and which type did you use? I always enjoy reading your testimonials. Mention if it worked, didn't work, and for how long. It's also very helpful for other viewers to read. I'm in Porto Alegre. Where are you watching from? I always like to know. Now, I have a suggestion for you. It's a video where I discussed vitamin B. Did you know? B12, like magnesium, also has signs and symptoms. With B12, up to 30% of people may have a deficiency. It's much more common than magnesium deficiency. It's crucial to recognize the signs and symptoms to seek help. Click here to watch the video about vitamin. Take care. See you next time.